Welcome back to Open Your Eyes to the Universe. I'm Gabriel Martin, your host for this evening. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'd like just to let you know what this program's about. It's a series of contemporary talks and conversations, open-eyed meditations and interviews with people who inspire and uplift others by sharing their wisdom, their insights and experiences this evening. In the spirit of reconciliation, the universe team acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and also their connections to land and sea and community. And we pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. And we'd also like to acknowledge and respect the wise elder within us all and the collective wisdom of all those here this evening. Now, last month, we were in the company of author and meditator Aruna Ludva, and she shared with us some of her wisdom and insights that she's gained on her path of personal transformation and fulfillment. And she provided some very practical tools and techniques to help us navigate the challenges and embrace the opportunities that we foresee as lying ahead in 2024. And here tonight, we're joined by a long-term meditator, Moira Lowe, and she's based in Argentina. And her topic is exploring forgiveness. We'll be unpacking the process of forgiveness, the benefits of forgiveness, and the power, the personal agency of forgiveness. You know, I think that most of us find forgiving to be a little challenging. And although they say forgive and forget, I think many of us find it a real challenge to forgive, let alone forget. We tend to, you know, hold on to the smallest of grudges, as well as those really large, burdensome transgressions. And we blame others and hold them responsible for our feelings of pain and suffering. And all of this is very understandable, but yet in doing so, we carry the burden with us long after the event or the situation has passed, because we're unable to forgive those who caused us pain and sorrow. We know it's not healthy for us to hold ourselves in this kind of suspended space of blame because it can be so hard to let go and forgive and forget. And we know that many wise people tell us that when a deep injury is done to us, we never actually recover until we forgive. So it's tricky terrain, isn't it? That ability to let go and forgive and forget. And otherwise, people encourage us to forgive irrespective of whether the perpetrator, the oppressor, is deserving of it or not, because you deserve peace. So how do we heal and move out of the victim mentality so that we can find peace and space and freedom within ourselves once again? These are some of the questions that form part of our conversation tonight with Moira. And I'd like to tell you just a little bit more about her. As I mentioned, she lives in Argentina. And she's been a meditator for many, many years. She's the director of the Brahma Kumaris in Argentina, where she was born and educated. She began her career as a surgical nurse and also studied museum administration just because of her passion that she has for art. And then at the age of 24, she set out on a two-year journey searching for the true meaning of love. Yes, you guessed it, something that I'm sure resonates with all of you, and a higher purpose in life. So two big quests that I think many of us have had or have. And it was this quest that led her to meet the Brahma Kumaris in 1986 in India, so in Mount Abu at the headquarters in India. And since then, her personal practice, her experience, and the deep desire to help others has led her to assist with the establishment of many Raj Yoga meditation centers in several countries in South America. She's based in Argentina and she travels around the world facilitating a lot of different you know, personal empowerment seminars and workshops on things like self-esteem, meditation, overcoming anger and fear and other really um, human-focused spiritual development areas that really bring about change in individuals and also organizations. So tonight, she's exploring forgiveness with us. Moira, it's just a 
beautiful pleasure to have you with us down under. Um, and I know that it's probably about 5 a.m. for you in Argentina. So from all of us here, it's just a huge applause that you've joined us. Uh, it's six o'clock here, nice and comfortable dinner time, and you're over there at 5 a.m. in the morning. So welcome to Down Under, Moira. It's just lovely to have you with us. Thanks, Gabriel, and good evening, everyone. Yeah, it's early in the morning, but, you know, early in the morning is equally beautiful to the evening. <laughs> Especially it's a silent time, it's time for reflection, it's time for the self, so here we are together. So thank you, Gabriel, for that yes. introduction and, and for this topic, which I, I think that is so crucial um, now to understand and to give us a, to give ourselves the chance to, to move on and let go of the pain and maybe the resentment we've been holding on or grudges that have come from maybe events or relationships or long-term conflicts, whatever caused that pain. We now need to address that because if we don't acknowledge the fact that I'm stuck somewhere, that I, I'm carrying the load of uh, whatever has made me feel really bad and is it's created a lot of sorrow in my life and it could be like even trauma from long long term back many of the traumas that we carry have come from our childhood and we are unknowing unknowingly uh, trying to overcome feelings and the way we 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 face things and we don't know why we're not um, moving to the space that we would like to be in or experience. So I think forgiveness is an invitation to go deep within and understand what, where I'm at, what is really going on within and to acknowledge on one hand that uh, life can be different that I can I can make a change and have full um, faith and conviction that things can become better. So forgiveness is is such an opportunity to to understand that whatever has happened in my life, um, although it might have looked like or felt very unfair. Uh, very cruel, very violent, whatever. It could have been a very small thing. It could have been a very big thing. Um, and somehow I, at that moment, was unable to protect myself, protect my heart from taking that, uh, taking it personally, taking it deep within my heart. And this... The fact that I took it has allowed that pain, that hurt, to, to stay with me. So it's about letting go. And letting go, you know, if we let go, I have a pen with me here. If I let go of this pen, it's so easy. I just put it on my desk and it's I've let go. But when it comes to letting go of resentment, when it comes to letting go of um, the feelings of revenge, then it's quite different. It requires me to, to go much deeper into my understanding that it's, it's hard to accept, actually, that I can only hurt myself. Whatever has happened, whether it was something that someone said to me, or did to me that that was happening as a fact and in forgiving it doesn't mean that I turn what was wrong into something right <laughs> if someone made a mistake to the extent that it has uh, really hurt it, it will be what it was but what I do with that is what what I can change 
So I take like full responsibility for what I want. So in letting go, I have to, in a way, take responsibility and in the understanding that it is because I have been thinking a lot about what was done. So what was done to me, that may have been quite an obvious act of violence. So, you know, a superficial vision of that would be that I was victimized by someone. And so there's a perpetrator creating a huge mistake. But here I am, the victim, creating another mistake, which is allowing that to sit in my heart. And so letting go would mean that I need to um, now focus because I have made that alive in me. It's like, you know, if someone is here provoking me, you would never deny that that is happening. But things, once a friend said, you know, everything in life happens for me, but not to me. And it's, you know, what, so what does this mean? Things happen for some reason. And the fact that it's happening doesn't mean that I need to, you know, allow that into my world. And in, in Spanish, we have a saying, like, you don't buy it. You know, it's there, but you don't buy it. You don't take it. And not easy. It's easier said than done, of course. But if something is happening there, someone is provoking me, if I ask you, is it that is it happening? You would say, yes, it is happening. But is it happening to me? And what would it take for that, you know, those harsh words, that, that rudeness, that roughness, that is happening there beside me to happen here within me? What would it take? It would take me to think about it, to, to reflect on it, to 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 allow it in and so if that happens then now it's happening there but now it's also happening here it's happening within me it's already in my mind so if i give it a, attention if i become somehow drawn attracted to that because it's happening then it will also create a feeling but if that is happening there and let's say someone at work is being very, you know, sarcastic, ironic about something you're doing or is not is is criticizing you or judging you in, in a way that is or even correcting you in an appropriate way. Maybe maybe they're right. They want you to do things differently. OK, but the way they're doing it is what might be hurting. So. OK, that is happening, but I don't need to take it within if I, you know, I can. If I if I remain in in a in a higher level of my observation of my awareness, in which okay, if I made a mistake, I can say okay, I made a mistake. But otherwise, you know, I'm not bad. So if I have a higher vision of myself, then whatever is being said will not affect me. But I need to be I need to be in that level of awareness in which I'm able to think higher and that will take me to a space in which, you know, it doesn't matter what is being said, it doesn't hurt me. If I think higher, then my feelings, will I, I will feel safe. If I say, you know, how dare he talk to me like this? How dare he say that? You know, this is not right. This is unfair. So I am now creating thoughts that will will create the feeling that I'm a victim, that I'm that I'm being hurt. So then, okay, that is happening there. I have someone provoking that, but I'm now feeling bad. But who is responsible for how I feel? Because the the, the wonderful thing to observe and understand and recognize is that unless I create the thought, I won't have the feeling. So thoughts are the seeds of the feelings that I, I hold in my heart. So if I have a higher vision of myself, 
Well, even if I accept, okay, I made a mistake, that's okay. So I take responsibility. That will make me feel responsible, but not a victim. And so so when I when I when I take this responsibility for how I feel, it's like I regain something which is so precious. And that's my freedom. The choice. The choice that I have in face of something that could feel so violent, could be so aggressive. And yet I choose to remain cool. I choose to protect my heart from those I could think, okay, it's your vision, but I hold a higher vision, a vision of respect and a vision of me that I can trust. So, okay. And so letting go is about focusing on what I want and not allowing that which I don't want to come within me. So letting go is really like a creation. Maybe I have held very negative feelings for a long, long time. I have made them, I have made that conversation, that fact, whatever happened, I've made it so alive in my heart that I, it may have happened once or it may have happened for some time, but I have created the feeling and the perception that it always happens. So my, my vision of the other is very negative. And so I think that he is like this or she is like this. And so letting go is to stop feeding those feelings of hurt with my thinking. So letting go is like a, it's a very creative thing. It's a, it's the creation of something that I want. It's something that I will give attention. I will nourish with my good thoughts and feelings. Maybe this is something that, okay, we've, we've held a relationship in which has been a lot of conflict, but now I want to harmonize. I want to move on. So I have a higher aim. So when I turn towards that, it says, because life is the flow of meaning. Life is the flow of my expression. So if I move on to what I want, I will be letting go. You know, those feelings will become the past. I will be able to let go of that revenge and focus on not only what I want, but also what is good. What did I learn about the situation? And so it's it's sometimes hard when we've, you know, we've legitimized being the victim for a long time. We have created so many thoughts that have justified that I was a victim. So then I don't, I haven't, I, I have felt that he or she was, or the situation was responsible for what I feel. So, but now I want, I want to change. I want to focus on what was the gift of this, of what have, has happened? What did I learn? So when when I realize that that has made me, you know, brave, that that has made me resilient, that I have learned, you know, how to take care of myself and that, you know, I'm not, I'm not prepared anymore to take any more sorrow. I will not be submissive anymore to a personality that is always, you know, undermining whatever I do or even my presence. So this courage, you know, this is a gift. Maybe if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have connected with this part of me, which is so precious, so powerful. So let me let me pause here and maybe let's have a little experience. So let's sit comfortably and take a deep breath. Let me come within. Let me be present in that sacred space behind my eyes. Let me, let me come in touch with who I really am. And as I breathe deeply and exhale, I let go of any tension, any discomfort, let me relax and let me become fully 
observant of this beautiful energy that I am, very subtle, the invisible me, the real me, the one who has traveled through many moments, good ones and bad ones, those moments that made me feel unsafe, that made me feel hurt. And here I am in the present. Let me become aware of what I need to let go. That which I need to move on from. I am now making a choice. I will move on to what I really want. I will not take any further violence towards me. And I'm able to stand up for myself and take full responsibility for who I am, for what I want. So I create a very powerful thought. I am a free soul. I choose to be free from negativity. I choose to come back to calm, to peace. That deep feeling that makes me free from all influence, the deep feeling that lets me know that everything is all right. And when the image of the voice of those moments come to my mind, I tell myself, I'm setting you free. I'm moving on. And I allow this feeling of peace to reach you. I could wishes for you as well. I make a choice. I will create good feelings of self-worth. I connect with my true value. I am peace. Even if things don't change around me, I will be okay. I will always come back home to who I am. I am a powerful being, a peaceful being. I feel safe. This awareness of who I really am 
nothing and no one can change who I am. Powerful, peaceful, free. And I focus on what I want. I want harmony in my relationships. I cannot control what others do. But I can always be myself. I can always radiate vibrations of peace, of calm, the coolness of calm into conversations, into interactions, into how I face things, challenging things. I am always who I am. That will never change. I am peaceful. I am powerful. I am free. I fill my heart with feelings of worthiness. I can give steps to protect myself. I take responsibility for what I think and what I feel. Regardless of what others say, how others see me, I remain open to learning, to improving from this safe place of who I am. In the silence of peace, I regain my power. I just want to share with you a little incident that I faced two days ago. I was sitting in the car. I was driving, actually. And the time came. I had to join a online meeting. And so I parked in a, in a kind of busy area. I parked and I put my phone just behind the driving wheel. So I sat there for like 40 minutes. And suddenly I hear, bam! It was so, so strong. Something had hit the car. I thought something had fallen on the roof. Then I thought maybe I was 
you know, hit from the back. So I told the people I was talking to, I said, hold on, I'll, I'll be right back. So I got, I got out of the car and first I looked around and there was nothing. <laughs> the car was parked behind me. And so I got out of the car and I just walked a few steps behind. And there was a woman that said, someone hit your car with a with some metal stick, very strongly. So I moved further back and I looked behind and the car was intact. Nothing had happened. No one had hit it. But when I got back into the car, I joined the call again and I said, well, you know, these are the kinds of things that when they hit your car like that, it's... It, it could be someone who was trying to steal from you. And when I looked down, my handbag had gone. <laughs> and so I, I, so I said, okay, look, I'm, I'm leaving this, um, this call because that's exactly what happened to me. So there I was. They took my handbag with all my documents. I had $3,000 in the bag and I had some let's say 200 more in pesos and the keys of a car, all my documents, credit cards, everything was there. And so the first thing I thought, oh my gosh, my bag's gone like this. And then I kind of sat back and said, okay, you know, this is a typical theft in Argentina. I don't know if that happens in Australia, maybe not, but here, I mean, the creativity for violence in the streets is, is inimaginable. Once you learn something, <laughs> something else can happen. And I've heard of this many times. So I thought, well, I can't get out of the car because they've got the keys of the car. <laughs> so if I get out of the car, the car might go, might go as well. So and it's these cars that you press with a button. So it's like, wow. Uh, so I sat there and I thought, okay, thank God I have another key. So I had to phone someone who was about an hour away to bring drive to Buenos Aires. Can you bring the key of the car to me? And then I called someone that could come and sit in the car because sometimes what they do is, you know, they, they see what they are interested in and then they throw the bag, maybe the documents. So I thought, let me walk around and see, you know, if it's anywhere there. But at that moment, I just, I just had to take a deep breath and say, okay, this has happened for some reason. Well, I tell myself, this is a little karma that I'm settling. <laughs> and then I thought, okay. And then I consciously had this thought. I said, okay, I now need to undergo, well, I, I have to cancel, you know, my credit cards. But, you know, getting all your documents back in Argentina is not so easy. Maybe in Australia, it's quite quick. But here it's bureaucratic and it's, it'll take time. It'll take me like a month to get back my, my ID card, my, my driving license, the documents for the car, everything. I need to. So I said, okay, I will choose to do this peacefully. You know, like I, and I told myself, I'm not a victim. And I, I just sat there and I thought, well, I'm sitting in an area where, although there were many, many people, it's not such a safe area anymore. And you know what? Nobody realized I was, there were, there were all these shops open and uh, these shops with, you know, the whole door open to the street. So it's not that you, everybody was inside, people were just right there, but nobody realized. The way it was done, it was like she entertained me at the back. And then the guy opened, because I opened the, my door, the other door was open as well. So he, from the other side, he just grabbed my bag and ran away. But nobody realized, nobody sees that. So no help. So I called the police. But I, th I just, I told myself, I am not a victim. I mean, this did happen. It happened. The bag was gone. Well, that would happen. But what do I do with that? And, and one thing I decided is I'm not going to talk about this all the time, but in sharing this with you is that I, I instantly thought, you know, this was not the right place to stop. Because I was, I was actually going to a shop where I was buying all the curtains for a new 
center, meditation center that we have bought in Buenos Aires. So I had the money for that. And so I thought, okay, this is this is a this is really a consequence. And what I saw at that moment is it's like it's like a, I became aware of my own mistakes driving, you know, when I kind of park in the wrong place because there's no parking place, or different ways of mistakes in the streets, right? <laughs> so things kind of accumulate. Then they ha- suddenly, it's like I felt unsettling something. It's like a little debt that I have. So, okay, let me accept that. Let me take responsibility. And now, you know, I find myself driving so cautiously. And I know that in Australia, you people drive so carefully. You, um, I remember my last visit there, I was driving somewhere. And because I, I, I released my, my seatbelt to take off a jacket, the person driving stopped. And I said, what happened? She said, but you've released your your." Oh, seatbelt. And I said, but but I'll put it on again. I'm just taking off my jacket. She said, but it'll be unsafe. And I thought, wow, these Australians, you are very accurate. <laughs> you know, we are wild drivers. And and although everybody is quite wild here, uh, it doesn't mean that that is right. So we accumulate mistakes. And at some point, those things will be settled. So things happen for some reason. And maybe I... At the moment, I would say, wow, I've been victimized with, you know, this this theft. But let me take responsibility. I will do whatever I have to do. I already bought a handbag and I've already tried to get some things that I had in the handbag. And I have to go through all these document things. But I just thought I will not I will not create any sorrow within. I will not take this as a loss. This is, this is exactly how I feel. And although, you know, some people came to know, so I said, why well, you know, did you have anything valuable this? Do you need any help? I said, well, you know, it happened for some reason and I just take responsibility. So it's like, I think that if we train, you know, the fact that things happen for some reason and I'm able to accept rather than, you know, resist or resent something and that was not a big thing. I mean, I have to give it a lot of time now. Uh, I had many other things to do, but now I find myself sitting, you know, waiting to do get things, get things done. And it's not easy here, but okay, I'll go through it. And I've even decided that all the time that I have to wait here and there to get things done, I will continue to do my work. So it's okay. It won't be lost loss of time either. And it's, it's a question of attitude, how we choose to face things. And so, but sometimes it's, you know, ongoing things like in relationships. But, okay, if I am able to accept that even a conflict is created, you know, what, what am I contributing to that? So I'm not really a victim of what someone is doing, but maybe a victim of what I am not doing for myself. So... In what ways do I need to change? What, what, what part of me, what power of me do I need to use to make me feel and to stop contributing to something that hits me back in such a way? Like I may, I may want to consciously move out of a conflict. So I'll, you know, if you need two hands to clap, I will remove my hand. So I take responsibility. So I will not. So so I will start like a healing. It starts with, you know, making that choice of what I want and letting go. It needs courage. It needs courage because whatever change, you know, whatever I want um, to heal means I need to transform something about me. And sometimes it's about very, very long-term trauma. It It could come from childhood. You know, I can tell you from my own experience, um, it was some, I, I was not even aware of that I had like a filter that made me, um, you know, made me very defensive, very aggressive. And it happened actually in Australia. Some 
I met a healer, someone who called me and talked me through something. She didn't even know me. I didn't even know who I was talking to. Someone that was, you know, they gave her, they, they asked her to call me because I was going through some things. I was really going through chronic anemia, but I didn't know why that had been created. And this woman, the way she spoke to me, she said, who is the man with a black hat standing beside you? And I thought, wow. I said, well, whatever this is, um, I'll play with it. And I said, well, the only man in a black hat could be my dad. So she said, you know, now it is safe for you to tell him that it's okay. Everything is okay. At the beginning, I couldn't understand very much what she was saying. And then I, I, I said, we connected with the little girl beside the man in the black hat and the abuse and the violence that I went through in my childhood, not sexual abuse. I was actually a vegetarian baby, but I was obliged to eat meat in a very violent way, which, you know, which I came to know later from this conversation that started in Melbourne, actually, that I had a trauma that had become a filter in my life that created an, something that would hurt others. I became very defensive and aggressive. And in a way, a thought pattern, a belief stayed with me that I cannot trust adults. And so I discovered this going through different experiments on healing. And I realized that my dad was a good person. I realized that when someone hurts you, it's because they are hurt. But there's a goodness about them that never changes, regardless of what they do. So we can, so I, I realized that I needed to trust again, trust myself, that I would not give myself any more pain, but also trust others. And that relationship healed. I became so free from those, from that attitude. It, it, it opened my heart. And it was amazing, just forgiving. I was not aware that I had that trauma, but when I became aware, these very, uh, like a wave of negative thoughts and feelings towards my father, it's as if I then saw so many other mistakes in his life. And I said, and so that healing was like, okay, that's his life. Now, what do I do? How do I want to relate with him? And I can tell you in the last eight years of his life, he passed away in 2021 through COVID. And it's that his relationship became so beautiful, so beautiful. But I practiced seeing the goodness in him, seeing him as a soul, that which I practiced for myself, seeing myself as a spiritual being and coming back to that space of safety of who I am is what I practiced with him. And you know, I also practiced I practiced the moment that he would leave, the moment he would leave his body. And I said, I don't want to go through any sorrow, not even when he leaves. So I, I, it's as if I went through what a good dad he was in many ways, although he had his own limitations. But I kind of, I, f I felt that there was no more debt, nothing, nothing, no... I would say no attachment, no dependence on him anymore. And when he left, I I shed no tears. I was so aware that he was becoming, setting himself free from his old body, that he was moving on, that I, and then I, it's as if the, the film of all the good moments, the goodness about him and the gift that he was to me in this life. And I felt so happy that I had done a lot of this inner work that I could trust. And although he was, you know, he was a grumpy person, he was always complaining about us, things, people, situations, Argentina. Everything was a reason for him to be, you know, grumpy. But even then, I used to play with him and say, well, Dad, things are not so bad anyway. Not that bad, you know. I used to play with him. Sometimes he thought I was a little bit strange. But 
it was I had such beautiful feelings and I had I was able to let go but I created that aim I want a beautiful relationship I didn't know for how long he would be with us by the time I healed all that and that must have happened in the last eight years and and I gave myself the gift of having a beautiful dad who he already was but the way I took him that was the gift so I this is where I feel that we we make this choice and we have the freedom to create and and keep the, you know, hold the learning, the gift of whatever we went through has made me stronger, has made me resilient. And I can also say that, well, I felt, ultimately, I felt grateful for it all, for whatever I learned from my childhood, whatever I learned from that healer in Melbourne, whatever I I. I learned from what I was experimenting myself. Sometimes we need help. So we can we can talk to people, we can talk ourselves through our pain. We can we can we can undertake some therapy to to be able to to release and to be feel understood. When we speak about things, we feel relieved and Maybe we need to prepare for conversations that we still need to face, things that we still need to go through. And we prepare. And and we're able to to, to do it in a way that, you know, who do, who do I want to be in that conversation? And I want to share another experience. When my dad passed, we had, I had to face, you know, <laughs> our family business and whatever came with that and suddenly I had to face my my brother my sisters and it became a huge conflict and there was a lot of hurt there was a lot of um, aggressive it became so violent to the extent that we needed a mediator to talk through some things I think now I'm hearing from many people my age that have to deal with their inheritance, that have to face. It's like a surprise. Like we were we were so united. We were we were such fun together, but suddenly it became so different. It was like we were completely unknown, completely different people. And yet there there was all this violence going on. One day my brother, he was so aggressive, so rude to me. I I felt so depleted. And then I, I was driving back to Buenos Aires and he said, William, you failed. Why did you take it? Why did you take it? It doesn't belong to me. It's just it's just his own compulsiveness. So I thought, he, he's, we've always had such fun. We have had so much love for each other. Why am I taking this? We did a lot. But I used to then, I thought, I need to be prepared. So every time I had to drive 500 kilometers to these endless family meetings, I said, okay, I'm choosing to be the one who will remain peaceful in these meetings. Let me bring a different perspective. And I'll stand up for my rights. I'll say the things that I need to say. I'll be as firm as I need to be, but I will protect myself and I won't take any abuse, you know, psychological abuse. So I, I, I took help from someone who explained many things that I could you know, the way I could do things in terms of legalities and all these things, it's the right help. And so, and then I thought, but I, I also need power. I need power. So in Brahma Kumaris, we, we value so much the companionship of divine help. And so I, I said, okay, I cannot go alone. I will go with my companion. So I invited God into my conversations. I said, let's do this together. And and sometimes I just needed to remain very silent. Sometimes I needed to be very clear and very firm. And but I felt that I was not alone. And this is something that that I cultivate a lot. Taking help. Help that goes beyond even my capacity. Sometimes you, you say, well, but I'm not that strong. I don't have that level of humility, maybe to ask for forgiveness when the situation requires it, because I made the mistake. And so 
it it takes it takes courage just to finish that little story you know once all my family things were settled i decided that i wanted to have very nice family relationships as we have always had and with my brother we had always been you know we were together in our childhood we had so much fun and this is the image i hold of him and i know he can be very wild but okay and so he had recorded a very aggressive rude message in our in our whatsapp family whatsapp someone said you know he has put this message so i decided to delete it i didn't even listen to it i said why am i going to dirty myself with all that and i have to clean myself i won't even listen to it so he doesn't know that i don't know <laughs> and so once everything was over i called him he was not available so i didn't i didn't get a response but then the next day he called me and said i i received a call from you but he was kind of like a bit concerned he must have thought, you know, after the things I've said to Moira, why should she call me? Something serious must have happened. So I said, you know, I called you because I wanted to know how are you? How are your things doing? How are your kids? How's, how's your work doing? And he said, oh, you know, like it's as if he was rude. He was surprised that I was calling him, not out of resentment or being a hurt or of offended, but just out of, you know, just out of pure interest. And so he said, oh, okay. He said, like, you know, this is about something else. So he so he started talking about his life and his children and his things. And, and, and it's, you know, it's my choice. And I will build upon what I want consistently. So I call him every now and then, you know. So I think this... This aspect of forgiveness is something that is so creative and it's about us. It's me who benefits from that because I don't want to lose my family. I want to be with them. I want to, I want to be able to, I want to know about them. I want them to be able to, to call me. I want them to be able, you know, being, you know, we, we teach meditation. So I know they will need that at some point. And I want them to have the freedom to be able to come. So, but what I what I what I have learned is where where is my real protection? Where does that my deep healing happen? Is when when I go deep within into the awareness of the purity that lies within me as a spiritual being. But that that also enables me to take the help from the divine source of purity, of pure feelings, of peace, of unconditional love. I really mm, have this uh, feeling that God is my father. This allowed me to release any, relieve, relieve me from any expectations of my dad and also released him from having to provide anything he didn't have that I might need, but my need is legitimate. So I feel that in this beautiful relationship, it's a silent relationship with the one who is also a spiritual being, a being of light, the source of true love, of unconditional love that holds the highest possible vision of me and this is the, the vision in which I'm able to recreate myself. Because suppose my feeling is of guilt because I have hurt someone, which I have done many times through my aggressiveness, my bossiness, my selfishness, so many weaknesses that I have acknowledged that I've had and that I'm working on, anger. And so... How do I free myself from that guilt? I can only come into a space where I, I can recreate myself in the vision of me being originally and naturally peaceful when I've seen myself being very violent or defensive. Then where do I go to? How do I come out of that feeling? And especially when I have that cliche vision of myself, I am aggressive, I am bossy, you know, I'm 
very egocentric or selfish. So in order to heal from that vision, that is the one that hurts me the most because maybe people change their minds about me, but have I changed my mind about me? So this is the real healing that needs to take place. And so I, I, <clears throat> I take refuge in this vision that is held of me in which I'm seen as, as a being of light, as a, someone who is compassionate, someone who is true, someone who is loving. I, for a long, long time, never felt I was a loving person, but I've learned from God that I am. And I have let go of that fear of, you know, opening my heart, sharing my feelings, and allowing love out and love in. So in meditation, in the silence space of an introspective, you know, vision of who I really am, and creating this powerful, sweet, loving connection, allowing that energy to, to heal, to, it's like resetting myself into, uh, into the real me, the real me, and allowing, forgive, allowing myself to forgive myself for how much I have hurt others. That has given me the courage also to ask for forgiveness, you know, and apologize and 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 express the, my interest, my feelings to to heal a relationship, to 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 amend somehow and express, you know, my vision of what I would like in the relationship with someone. So I think that this journey into forgiveness when it is forgiving someone who from whom I have taken sorrow or forgiving myself I can can only benefit me and of course when I become free from that and I'm, I'm able to allow the flow of being peaceful of being loving of you know being me then of course others do benefit from that in Brahma Kumaris, we have this motto, is like, when I change, the world changes. So, and, and sometimes things, you know, are very, very subtle, very invisible. So I need to be silent enough to, to detect what is it that is stopping me from being happy. So... Mm. Moira, amazing, a, a very deep and um, moving conversation. I think you've given Australia, Australians and all those listening and, um, and open your eyes to the universe a very, very big gift by the way that you've um, spoken so lovingly and compassionate, compassionately and, and gone into the depths of your stories on forgiveness. It's, um, it's been quite mesmerizing listening to to what you've had to say. It's a huge gift. And so we've got a few questions coming in, but I just really wanted to acknowledge the depth of your sharing and how beautiful, beautifully articulated and insightful it's been. Um, but could I ask you a couple of questions that have come in? I know that some viewers would like to check in with you on a couple of things. Um, we have a question here that's, how to stop the continuous waste thoughts about what happened in the past <clears throat> when they come back again and again, particularly if a similar situation arises again? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> wasteful thinking, you know, an image that comes, waste can only happen, um, or not, it's the noise in our mind when we feel empty you know if you have an empty <laughs> vessel or pan you have a little stone and you move it around then it'll it'll sound very loudly but if that same thing is full even if that little stone is there there'll be no more sound so i think that we need to take responsibility of um, creating you know that uh, it's like we need to focus on what is it that we really want and mm -hmm. we can't just tell the mind, stop thinking, stop thinking this waste. We can only take the mind sweetly into 
in, into a direction of something that interests, that brings benefit. You know, Daddy Janki, who was one of our big, big seniors in the Brahma Kumaris, used to tell us, treat your mind lovingly as if you're educating a child. And although wasteful thinking has become such a deeply ingrained habit, so it's like automatic pilot. But then if we start reflecting and thinking of things that that we really are interested in, that are not superficial, it does take like a little introspection to really, you know, understanding what is it that I need? What is it that I want about my life? It may be something that, you know, in what direction do I want to go? And start reading things that will, you know, some food for your thoughts, for think, for your mind, and then reflect deeper into that. And it's like unlimited how, how deep we can go into, into significant thinking, um, powerful thinking, pure thinking, elevated, deep thinking. And it's something we need to cultivate. So, well, we attend daily classes that feed these kind of thoughts that we are able, that, that trigger, you know, they provoke you, provoking positive, pure thoughts, kind of set you on a journey of exploration of some topic or another. Also, um, I think that today we have to administer this because mm -hmm. administrate it because this is this has become our main distractor. And you know, distraction and being superficial and taking, you know, all the time. So we need to decide how much we need, you know, how much we need to be informed. Right now in Argentina, it's gone wild, crazy. This, you know, the news are we need to things are changing daily with 240% inflation yearly. Can you imagine? You go to a shop in the morning, the price is one. In the afternoon, it's a different price. You quote something, tomorrow it's a different price. So you think, okay, we're, we're on such a journey. I should be informed by the minute. But then wait a minute. What do I need to be informed of and how much? Because then if, I, if I, I'm all the time drinking all this stuff from the news, then when I sit quietly, let's say I want to meditate, what will be the content in my mind? That which I've been watching, you know, little videos, unnecessary stuff. So I need to make the conscious choice that I want to protect my mind from wasteful input. And this could make a lot of difference. Like, for example, not using your cell phone before you go to sleep will make a difference in the quality of your sleep. Because all these thoughts continue throughout, you know, in the night. They will still take some form of energy. So... What when you wake up in the morning, what are your first thoughts? Definitely whatever you've been thinking when you went to sleep. So we now need to make a choice. Okay, do I want to sleep peacefully? Do I want to rest? Because this wasteful thinking is making is creating a lot of disturbance in sleep. So there's a lot about that online, and people are having a lot of difficulty in falling asleep. So I think we need to to make choice in every aspect of our life, especially, and, and conversations. You know, sometimes we go into so much wasteful conversations and so many wasteful conversations and toxic company. So we need to really be aware, make a decision. What kind of life do I want? And, and be alert. Whatever happens within is my creation. So I need to see what I feed my interest and when we go when we choose something deep significant it becomes like a magnet it draws us but we also need to discipline the mind a little bit meditation mm. will help a lot mm. yeah thanks Maria. that's a, a really full answer thank you for that there's another question that i'd like to pitch um to you please it's a when does one actually know when one has fully forgiven those who have hurt them in the past? Sometimes when we have sad or rough moments in life, we tend to reflect on why we arrived there in the first place. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question, really, because yeah. I have personally felt that I have forgiven some people, and then I find myself 
telling me the story again. And then I, I realized that uh, I haven't really let go. I think that um, when we when we move into a deep, deep space of self-respect, into our own self-worth, it's as if we move into our dignity and we develop a, a habit. It's not just about that one individual or incident that I want to forgive or move on from. It's because, okay, that might have gone, but then something else might start. I need to develop a habit of having good wishes. And when we, we, we're in this mode of, it's a practice, it's, a, it's like a little discipline we need to learn of seeing the goodness about others and wishing them good. It's something that if I start giving, 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 I will get the return of that. So even if, you know, that happened a long time ago, I can, and it, if it still comes back to my mind, let me think something good about that person. Let me have purposely good wishes for them. And even though that may have been in the past or far, it's distant, far away, different country, different place, my vibrations will reach the soul in the form of blessings, in the form of good wishes. Because thoughts do travel, they're only vibrations. And we can direct that vibration wherever we want with the power of our intention. So I think that, you know, if I feel it hasn't, it hasn't finished, then let me do some more. And let me also, uh, because whatever much we we offer in terms of good energy, that will come back. It's not forever. It's not for conflicts are not forever. They will heal. And what we practice in the Brahma Kumaris, I love this practice, is writing a letter to God, is opening my heart, and whatever is still there big or small, offering it, giving it to the one who will merge it in his unlimited, unconditional love. And in doing so, he empowers and awakens that unconditional love in me. And then if I am in that experience, then I won't feel that there's any debt. I will feel that I'm settling, like my debts, my my past is dissolving and becoming something else. It's becoming something valuable, precious, a learning curve, something that I have treasured from whatever I've gone through because it's made me a better person somehow if I have done my little inner work. And writing a letter is very sweet because it's, it, it, it's like a form of meditation. It's like a conversation in which I acknowledge fully how I feel, what I have done, even even holding a grudge is still a mistake. So it's still something I do. And so this is very healing. And, and if we do this, we will find that those thoughts won't come back. It's, it's over, we've moved on with a sincere heart. If we do this with a sincere heart, you know, when we played the victim for too long, we have thought that we were right. <laughs> and so it is. it will require crushing that ego somehow. Mm. Thank you for that. That's a, a, a fantastic um, response, Moira. Thank you. There's another question here. When someone repeatedly does something that hurt you, but they say sorry and you forgive, and then it just keeps happening over and over again, how do we keep forgiving each time without putting up our guard? It's, yeah. It's a well, you can question that I, one. Yeah, yeah. Not easy because when we, you know, we have to live with difficult personalities. We all have some teacher <laughs> teaching us the lessons of what we have to um, empower, cultivate further. Uh, and so, I think that we can also develop the art of um, good conversations in which we can become a good listener. And also, um, sometimes it's like 
you feel you've had this conversation many times, but if you if you again and again go into that, you you add a little bit further, because you know sometimes we 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 reach agreements like you know you're clear about what I feel, you're clear about the the things that I feel uncomfortable with, or that could be different. So we become we we kind of agree. But then that agreement wears out because there is there is that entropy <laughs> that things do wear out. So we need to go back again, back again. But uh, I I think I I we have to have full faith that things will change. That because if we think well this is it this will never change well that's a creation too. So I've set that limit, and that won't allow me to grow. Here again, I would like to bring Daddy Janky into our memory. Daddy, Daddy must have heard, you know, we used to go to Daddy Janky, this very senior teacher we had in the Brahma Kumaris, such a spiritual giant, an angel, I would say. And we would go again and again with the same old stories and the same conflicts. And Daddy never lost hope in us. She had this full faith that that sometime we would change. She would probably hear the complaints I had and probably heard the complaints others had about me. And so she knew both sides of the coin. But she never lost hope. And I think her practice and those moments with her was so precious because she taught us to see the good about me, but also the good about others. And so we have to, we have to keep going. We have to not lose faith and that is making me grow and maybe in these interactions that happen daily <laughs> periodically we because i'm growing something different will be added to that interaction and sooner or later it will change there's nothing that won't change <clears throat> especially if we're moving on mm. right Thanks, Moira. We've got another two questions if we've got time, and I, I really am wanting to hold some time to do a second meditation commentary with you so that you can take us into that experience of the divine in the context of forgiveness that you've spoken so eloquently about. But here's a question that I think is really worth pitching. How can I actively choose memories of joy and peace so that I can let go of memories of pain and suffering? It's hard to remember happy times, could I imagine happy times? Would that work? Yes. Yes. Visualizing what you want. If if only those sad moments come to your mind, then you have to really um, work on what you want and visualize. See yourself in that situation. See yourself being the way you want to be. And, you know, it's as if you... You visualize your interactions. How? What would it look like for me to go into a meeting or into a conversation, whether with your children, your your cup, your your partner at work, anyone, friends? What would it look like if I if I'm positive? If I don't? If I talk about my, you know, what I want in my life rather than the past, remembering always the past, because. The past is only present because I give it my attention and I'm recreating it all the time. But, you know, in the present, I can I can create something different. And in the present, I'm creating the future. So if I really, you know, visual, and then maybe it, it takes, you know, cre creating new friends, new contacts. It's, it's quite amazing what happens when we make a very positive, elevated choice for myself you suddenly start meeting people who who are very positive, who are very elevated. It says if you move on to a different frequency, you take yourself higher. And there's a whole lot of people that are reflecting in a different way that are, you know, good company to you. So this is also something that will be a consequence of your higher thinking. You you can focus on what it is you want and you you attract that you take yourself there mm, it's lovely um here's here's a final question um and it's a statement i know that when i allow my heart to be generous 
then in that generosity of spirit, I can let go and forgive and be able to find the freedom <clears throat> that's wanted. But how do I develop generosity of spirit in the first instance? And how do I connect with God to help me with this? Yeah, yeah, beautiful question. Because sometimes we are we feel depleted. We have like nothing to offer. But uh, when when we give these first steps, they they might be baby steps towards towards myself. Um, we tap into that energy that I may not be aware that I am, but it's there. And because I have been like in a domain of ego for so long, uh, the vision of me is very small, a very limited, <clears throat> especially when we have felt hurt. And but if if we if we start practicing going within, we we do connect with that. Uh, which has always been there and will always be there, and that is our our essence, our our purity, our our original power of the soul. And <clears throat> it is from this, sorry, it is from this awareness that we can also think of who, not only who I am, but who I belong to, and. Even if we give baby steps there as well, it's like, you know, the, the relationship of a mom and, the, and a little child. The little child can only do whatever much they can do, but the mom does the difference. So if I have this pure thought that I want to connect to the source of pure love, to unconditional love, then I'm, I'm taking myself into that space. I'm making myself available he is already there to embrace me. And he will he will fill me with that current, with that energy of, of who he is. So it's like reconnecting to a source, you know, like the sun, the, the heat of the sun is to a to a to a flower, to a plant. In the seed of a, of a flower is everything about the flower. It's full shape, it's full expression, but it's not expressed. It's like, unless it is in proper soil and it receives the heat and the light of the sun, that awakens the seed and allows the seed to express. So as much as the sun is to a plant, so is God, the divine, to the soul. It, he is the eternal parent, not only the father, but the mother of the soul. And in the healing, we connect to the feminine energy, the feminine principle of God that embraces us, that does not judge us, that accepts us. So when this, this heat of love, this warmth of divine love touches the heart, it, it allows us to to blossom it allows us it allows what is within the seed of me to grow and when that happens then i will be able to offer i will become more loving in my relationships i will become more empathetic i will understand what people are going through why they do what they do so and and i will be able to be compassionate and do something about that to relieve people of whatever feelings they have but i need to do it first for myself I need to give t quality time to me, to myself. Yeah. Moira, that's um, exquisite. You've made uh, very deep and and um, practical comments on this whole aspect of forgiveness. And um, before we close out, it would be, given this last question, it'd be lovely if you could do a, a meditation commentary with us about that connection with the divine in terms of the mother, the feminine energy, that beautiful healing energy um, that's part of forgiving. Okay. So let us take ourselves back into that space, that sacred space within the self, behind my eyes, into the awareness of being that 
invisible light, the light of love, the light of peace, the true being that I am. Let me feel a power that lies within me, that pure energy that has been there forever and will be there forever because it is who I am. Beautiful, shining light. And now I will take my attention deeply into silence, into that quiet space beyond my body, everything around me, beyond anything mundane and temporary, beyond the physical, into a dimension of light, silent light. This is my home, the home of all souls. It's where we come from, where I see myself just as a minute star. A bright light, only light. I am immersed in silence, in peace, in the presence of the source, of the divine, of the one who is eternally pure who is ever silent, the one that is the source of infinite peace, the beautiful energy that embraces me like waves reaching me of pure vibration. My heart is open to the light of the Supreme and allows his rays of peace to reach every corner of the soul. He is also my mother, the divine energy of love, unconditional, unlimited, pure love. She is the one that accepts me as I am. I don't need to prove anything. I am just me. And I allow the warmth of divine love to fill my heart. Unconditional love that liberates me, sets me free from the past, that heals the wounds of my broken heart.
This is the love of the mother. The one that has full faith in me. The one that knows me forever. Who holds the highest vision of me. In her sweet eyes. I can see my own beauty. The pure being that I am. And I can accept who I am. I can let go of guilt, of any negative feelings. I dive deep into the feeling of being loved by God. The Supreme. I am a soul worthy of pure love, true love. And with this feeling, I can trust, I will trust myself and others. I come back, I take a deep breath. I can always come back to this invisible world into his company, I am always only a thought away. Om Shanti. Oh, Mira, gosh. You've, um, you've taken us on a very huge journey this evening, and if there's one there's one word that comes to my mind, it's authenticity. Uh, I think your authenticity is outstanding and and your willingness to share, you know, your journey of forgiveness through the many examples that you've shared with us this evening have really been truly enlightening. Um, and I'm not surprised that um, with the questions we've received, but also I know that as people re-listen to this, they'll take a lot of benefit Um it's remarkable the way that you've been able to so beautifully articulate uh, the process of forgiveness and drawing on your own experiences and your deep soul wisdom. So there's a lot of blessings from all of us to you for, for taking us with you in that process. It's uh, such a rewarding inner work that you've been doing and to be able to share it so, so easily, you know, and so freely. Uh, yeah, a big blessing uh, that you've given all of us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank um, you, Gabriel. I'd also really like to thank you too for, you know, for living a life dedicated to the upliftment of, of yourself and others and the world. And, and that too is really a beautiful contribution to our world and our human family. So yes, your dedication, your spiritual commitment, what a wonderful contribution to our world. So thank you too for doing that and, um, and being part of a living light that uh, that our whole world needs so much these days. So um, a big blessings and thank you for coming on Universe. It's been a delight to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. And we hope to see you here in person sometime. <laughs> a, a trip, yeah. a visit to Melbourne. That, that sounded like a long time ago, but... Um, yeah, it was yeah. a starting point. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> I'll be coming in... January, I'm coming to a silence retreat. I promised myself I'll come this year. Oh, wonderful. 
yeah, 2025, please. Well, we're looking forward to it. And um, it'd be lovely to have you physically, Gracie Shores, Moira. So, yeah, something for us all to look forward to. And viewers, you'll probably be able to meet Moira in person because I'm pretty sure that we'll be doing programs that allow you that opportunity. So thanks in advance, Thank Moira. Beautiful evening Thank together. So viewers, uh, you might like to browse our online bookshop, Eternity Inc. It has a full range of online books on self-empowerment and inner powers and always at not-for-profit prices. So do check them out. You will find books on forgiveness there and the empowering process of, of forgiveness. And Moira has given us some very powerful examples that really show the, the power and the personal agency in forgiveness. Now, if you'd like to subscribe to Open Your Eyes to the Universe to receive monthly updates, then please email us at special.events at au.brahmakamaris.org. In terms of our next episode of Universe, well, it'll be on Saturday the 25th of May at our usual time, that's 6pm AEST. And next time around, we'll be joined by Maureen Goodman from the UK and her topic is hope and optimism. So we'll see you then. And as we close out tonight, we'll play a song from Bliss, uh, one that Peter will put on, and um, and that will sweetly end our program. But until uh, we see you again on the 25th of May, take care, walk lightly on this earth without any burden by taking the power of love from the divine to release feelings of blame and being a victim and to let go to forgive and to forget and to step into the space of truth and freedom. Om Shanti.